Explosion shot. Gotcha. I got you with you. Ha, ha. Committed to memory. Take it easy. This may turn a little. Take yourself to home. Remember, health comes first. A bit. Quiet now. Here comes the cat. There is no escape. Now you shall perish. And that is it for the uh, Spiral Abyss run right there. So, um, of course, I am going to go over why I used the team and, of course, showcase my builds like always in these Spiral Abyss videos where I just run floor 12. So, yeah. But, um, Sean Yoon is really interesting. And I mean that her team is actually pretty viable, as you saw there in floor 12. She could actually get the job done. She's actually that good. <laughs> I am not joking. Same with Gaming. Yes, I am calling him Gaming now because some of you might get annoyed that I'll just call him Gaming. So I'll just say Gaming for uh, now. So uh, Gaming and Shangyun. I really wanted to test them out and see what they are capable of since I did just finish building them. And um, since I haven't uploaded in like so long and I haven't worked on the video for so long since I played Persona 3 Reload, yes, Persona 3 Reload, um, I just wanted to push out at least one video um, before I get back into uh, Persona 3 Reload. By the way, spoilers, but I am at the end of the game. So yeah, once I finish editing this video and uploading this, I am going straight to Persona 3 Reload and just finishing it. So yeah. Um, but enough about Persona 3 Reload talk. It's time to talk about what team I use and why I use them. So, the first team that I used is the Plunging Attack Team. Yes, with Shang Yun as support, of course. So, um, if you guys don't know, Gaming is actually pretty good. Like, I'm not joking. He's like D look good in like Plunging Attack. Um, as you saw there, like every single time I do a plunge, he does like what 100k or 160k. By the way, um, I will showcase my build, but he is minimally built, by the way. So yeah, he's able to output numbers like that, and he's minimally built. So yeah, keep that in mind. And also, on the second half, I ran the Hyper Bloom team. I wanted to showcase Nahida at some point, but I already did a Nahida showcase. So what am I supposed to do? Well, I could just do a Nahida run on Spiral Abyss. So that is what I did. I just ran the same team that I ran in the uh, first time I beat Spiral Abyss. So yeah, um, that is why I ran Nahida. And besides, both Shan Yun and Nahida are on the same um, version. So that means that I wanted to at least showcase both of them in the same Spiral Abyss run. So that is why I chose Shan Yun and Nahida for this uh, Spiral Abyss run specifically. And also to showcase that Ga Ming and Shang Yun are nothing to sleep at. They are actually really good at their job. So yeah. But anyways, that is it for the reason why I use those teams. But now it is time to actually go over their builds. So yes, it is time to go over everyone's builds. So here we go. So I'm going to be going over the first half and then the second half team. And then we'll just close off the video there. So yeah. Uh, I really do need to go back to my Persona 3 Reload uh, playthrough. So yeah. But um, anyways, enough about that. It's time to talk about the teams I used. So the first team that I used is, well, the plunging attack team with our star DPS, Ga Ming. Or Gaming, if you want to be uh, funny. But uh, Ga Ming is actually pretty good. I mean, 
this is how I built him as. So he has like 50% crit rate, which is pretty average. Crit damage is at 180, which is not that high. It should have been 200, but it doesn't really matter. Engine recharge is at 150, so at least he could get his burst back decently. So that is why I have him at 150 uh, ER and then balance his crit rate, crit damage. It's so that he's able to do as much damage as he can um, when his burst is up and also to get my burst up really, really fast. So yeah, that's the reason why I ran Ga Ming with crit rate, crit damage, ER. So yeah. As for weapon, Serpent Spide is literally his best weapon. I am not joking. This is his best weapon. Um, yeah, a battle pass weapon is his best weapon. So the reason why he is really good with this weapon is because, well, if you're in the air, you're not going to take damage anyway, um, unless the uh, hitbox of the enemy's attack is like really big. But he's able to do a lot of damage and he's able to do that because of the passive right here. So every four seconds, the character's on the field, he gets 10% more damage. So yeah, and you take 2% more, but it doesn't really matter because he loses HP anyway. So yeah, he drains his HP to do damage. And when he does damage, he heals himself. So yeah, it, it doesn't really matter. Uh, as long as uh, Ga Ming is able to do damage, he should be fine. And besides, you are supposed to abuse your iframes. Yes, abuse the ever-living crap out of your iframes. So, on your burst, you can abuse your iframes. On your dash, you can abuse your iframes. In the air, you sometimes won't get hit in the air. So yeah, abuse however you can to get as much stacks as you can. Because it will reset, um, basically. Uh, when you take damage. When you take damage, it reduces the stack by one. So don't take damage as often. But it does reset when you leave the field. So keep that in mind. And as for artifact set, I have Four Piece Crimson Witch of Flames. This is his best set. I'm not joking. Yeah. Um, this is literally his best set if you are running a reaction team. So basically, Farina Gaming. Yeah. Um, that's how he's able to do 160k on every time he does a plunge attack, which is bust busted as crap. Um, if you want to run another set, you can run Hunters. Hunters is pretty good too, since he does lose HP when he does his E, and also um, consecutive E's as well, since he does heal himself and he does lose HP. It means that Hunters is pretty good on him too. So. It's either Crimson Witch if you want the reaction damage, and besides, he's able to do multiple E's on his burst anyway. So uh, the Crimson Witch of Flames passive gets stacked, um, or gets its max three stacks. So you're able to do more um, reaction damage. Or you can run Hunters since um, he's able to lose HP and he's able to crit more. So it's either you want to crit more or you want to deal more damage. So yeah, it doesn't really matter what you choose. Crimson or Hunters is his best set. As for constellations, I have him at C6. Yeah, I was lucky enough to get him C6. Um, if you want to run Gaming as like one of the best pyro DPSs in the entire game, you need C6 because you're able to get crit rate, crit damage increase on your plunging attack, and also your radius will increase, meaning that its AOE is much bigger. Also, he's able to get a ton of other stuff, so he could heal. You can um, increase your attack when you heal. Yeah, it really does a lot. He's able to restore energy. Yeah, he's really, really good with constellations. So, um, he's okay at best at C0. Um, but if you want to elevate his damage even further, C6 is the way to go. Because crit rate crit damage is really high. Think of it like Nahida C2. So, yeah. As for talents, I have 699. You see what I mean by minimally built? It's because I only got into six talents. So, yeah. Um, he's able to output numbers like that. Imagine this at level 13. Yeah, so uh, uh, I am gonna be leveling up uh, Ga Ming because he's actually pretty good. So yeah, but there is Ga Ming, um, really good uh, pyro DPS. Don't sleep on him. He's actually really good um, as you saw with the number output and how well he did in the uh, Spiral Abyss. I didn't even have to reset once. Yeah, that's how good that team is. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, next up, we have our girl, Miss Farina, aka the Hydro Archon, quote unquote. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, Farina, she is still the same as always. Uh, high HP, crit rate, crit damage, high energy recharge, so she can get her burst back. For weapon, I have Splendor Tranquil Waters. This is our best weapon. 
if you want to know what her best four star weapon is, it's definitely the Festering Desire. But if you're not an OG, then the Fishing Pole. So yeah, you could just get the Fishing Pole or the Festering Desire or Splendor Tranquil Waters. But I ran Spendle, or Splendor Tranquil Waters because this is her best sword. As for Artifact Set, I have Four Piece Golden Troop. That's definitely her best set because she's able to get elemental skill damage when she's off the field and her bread and butter is her elemental skill. So yeah. As for Constellation, I have C2. If you want to run a really good support uh, Farina, you just need to get C2 because you're able to accelerate your fanfare with C1. And then with uh, C2, you can accelerate it even further. And also you can increase her HP, meaning that she's able to do more damage because her talents scale off of HP. So yeah, see, max HP, max HP. Yeah, um, you want to run Farina with HP. So yeah, but there is Farina, still really good to this very day. Um, I don't think she'll ever age ever because she is basically one of the best Hydro sub DPSs and one of the best Hydro supports in the game. There's no contest. <laughs> Next up, we have our newest five-star character in the game, Shan Yun, AKA Cloud Retainer. So uh, with Shan Yun, you want to build her with max attack because that is what her main kit is all about. It's all about her attack. As you see here, um, I have high ER on her, high attack, so that she's able to heal her party members really easily and able to get her burst back really fast. As for her weapon, I have Skyward Atlas. Funny enough, this is her best 5-star weapon on budget. Yeah, this is her best budget 5-star weapon. Of course, her fan is her best weapon because it increases the plunging attack bonus on party members by, I think, 28%. I'm not too sure. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But... Her fan is able to increase plunging attack damage, but since I don't have that fan and besides I'm saving primos and uh, fates for another character, um, I have to stick with Skyward Atlas because it has a base attack. So basically, all you need is a base attack catalyst. That's all you need because she scales off of attack. The more attack she has, the more healing she does. The more attack she has, the more scaling her plunging attacks do. It is a no-brainer. <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you want to put Shanyun at her maximum potential, you have to give her an attack percent catalyst. It doesn't even have to be the Skyward Atlas. It could be any other four-star attack percent catalyst. As long as it is a attack percent catalyst, you should be fine. So yeah. As for artifacts, I have four-piece Viridescent. Um, this is her best set if you're running reaction damage. So yeah, uh, this is basically Gaming and Diluc. Yeah, so if you want to run Gaming and Diluc, Viridescent Venerer is her best set. If you want to run Zhao, who doesn't need to rely on reactions, then just run the newest set. So yeah, um, which is Songs. So you can either run Songs or you can either run Viridescent. But Songs is for, um, yeah, Songs is for uh, Zhao. And then Viridescent is for Gaming and Diluc. Had to think about that one for a second. But yeah. But uh, in general, it doesn't really matter what you choose. Choose between the two sets. Uh, the healing bonus, the new healing bonus one, or the animal damage one. So yeah, it doesn't really matter what you choose. Choose what you want. As for Constellations, ever at C0, she doesn't need Constellations to be good. Although C1 is a bit good because she's able to get two... Um, ease, which is pretty nice. It means that she's able to accelerate her burst really fast, but she doesn't need it because if you build her with high energy recharge, she doesn't need it. All she needs is one E and she's able to get her burst back. So yeah. As for talents, F666. Again, mentally built, still pulled her weight. Yeah, um, really good. So that is Shang Yun. Really good um, animo support. Uh, best plunging support in the game because she's the only one. But yeah, um, she's able to make anyone um, a plunging support. And I will be making a uh, Sean Yoon uh, showcase video in the future. Stay tuned for that uh, because there is a lot, and I mean a lot of things to test with Sean Yoon. So yeah. And last but not least, we have our boy Bennett, uh, who is the GOAT. Um, of all time. Uh, yes, the greatest of all time, all time. 
I have to say it twice because he's just that good. So yeah, as you see here, max HP is pretty high, ER is pretty high, um, yeah, your typical stuff. As for his weapon, Skyward Blade is his best weapon because it has ER. If you're opting for the highest base attack weapon, then Aquilia Favonia is his best weapon. So yeah, Aquilia Favonia, Skyward Blade, Festering Desire, or Favonia Sword. That is his best swords. So yeah, basically what I'm trying to say is high base attack ER or just high base attack. So yeah, it doesn't really matter as long as you uh, uh, give him his weapon, he's able to perform fine. So yeah, as for artifact set, he needs Noblesse because this is his only set he'll ever run because it is his best set. Unless you're running a DPS Bennett, then obviously you just run Crimson Witch. But uh, I'm running Bennett as a support. So Noblesse is his best set because he's able to buff all his party members on his burst. And guess what his burst does? It buffs party members. So yeah. As for constellations, I have him at C5. C6 is not really good on him. Um, because, well, I want to run him with other characters besides Pyro characters. So yeah, um, I'm, not, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this ever. So yeah, C5 is where he will be at. And as for talents, I have 6, 9, 13. This is fully maxed out because that is his bread and butter. So yeah, that is it for the first half. As you see there, um, the plunging team is just your basic uh, double Pyro with two other elements with uh, Shang Yun, obviously, for the plunging damage. So yeah, that's basically it for the first half. And for the second half, we have your typical Hyper Bloom team. Yes, one of the best teams ever made because the damage output is absolutely ridiculous on these characters. So yeah. But here is the first member of the Hyper Bloom team, which is Raiden Shogun herself, um, AKA Broken. <laughs> so, as you see here, she has crit rate crit damage. ER is pretty high too. Her weapon is Engulfing Lightning, which is her best weapon. Her second best weapon is to catch, which is a four star weapon that you can get by fishing. So yeah, you can either fish or you, you can either spend money to get Engulfing Lightning. So yeah, the choice is yours. As for artifact set, I have four piece emblem of severed fate. Her best set, definitely. Her best support set. Her best sub. Her best DPS set. So yeah, literally her best set because everything, and I mean everything, revolves around her burst. So yeah. As for constellations, I have read C2. It's because of C2 that I was able to do big, big damage and able to melt HP bars. So yeah, that is why I ran C2. And besides, uh, C2 Raiden is her best uh, constellation if you want to run her as a DPS. But I will say it, she doesn't need constellations to be good because you could just have her at C0 and she's able to perform really well anyways, so it doesn't really matter. But if you want that little extra oomph, if you want Raiden to be a god, then you could just run this really good um, C2. But again, I will say it again, you don't need constellations. She's already good on her own right. As for talents, I have 10, 10, 10. I main her, so I have to fully talent her. So yeah, that is Raiden Shogun. Um, does not age. Still really good to this very day. She's a god. <laughs> so yeah. Next up, we have another god here. The god of Dendro. Nahida. So yeah, um, Nahida hasn't changed one bit either. I mean, she has high EM. Crit rate crit damage is basically a subpar. ER, she doesn't need ER because her burst um, cost is really low. So yeah. As for her weapon, I have a thousand floating dreams. Definitely her best weapon, but if you want to run another weapon that is free to play friendly, then just run the magic guide, which is a three star weapon that you can easily R5. And what does the magic guide do? It gives you EM and it also increases the damage on opponents affected by Pyro and Electro. Yes, but teams. Run Electro and Pyro. Yeah, Dendro teams. So yeah, this that is her best weapon. Her best free-to-play weapon, the Magic Guide. But if you want to make her maximize the potential and also increase other elemental types damage because of her EM, then a Thousand Flowing Dreams is for you. As for Artifact Set, I have Deep Wood Memories. This is her best set if you are running Solo Nahida. But if you are running different teams, then you could either run 
Deep Wood Memories, but if someone else is running Deep Wood Memories, then you can just run Gilded. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. It's either Gilded Dreams or Deep Wood Memories. Run either of the two and she's a god. It doesn't really matter what you run. So yeah, uh, Gilded or Deep Wood. <laughs> As for Constellations, I have read C2. Um, if you have not checked out the, the Hida summoning video, I suggest you do because uh, it is a trip, all right. But um, with the Hida Constellation, she's able to basically increase the threshold on her elemental burst, so it's able to do more things. And then her C2 just gives her flat 20% crit rate and 100% crit damage. Yeah, that is flat. So yeah, it is really, really good. Really good Constellation. But she doesn't need Constellations to be good because she's already a god uh, to begin with. Um, with her kit. Her kit is just way too good. She doesn't need constellations. It's only it's just like right in where you if you want a little extra oomph on your gameplay Then get her C2. So yeah, but as for talent 6 10 10 um, These two are her bread and butter. So that is why I ran that with crowns So as you see they're 10 10. So yeah, that's basically it for Nahida. Still one of the best dungeon supports in the entire game um, if not the best, uh, she's also one of the best sub DPS's, uh, she's also a really good main, so yeah, it's basically like Raiden. Raiden and Ahita often fight for the title of the best character in the game because of how much they do, because they both are really good mains, they both are really good subs, and they both are really good supports. So yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a back and forth between these two on who the best character in the game is, so yeah. Um, next up... We have, uh, well, Ye Lon. <laughs> so yeah, um, the only reason why I ran Ye Lon is because she's a bow character. And guess what you need the bow character for in this floor? You have the Aeon Blight Drake. So yeah, um, running a bow character is a must. Because if it doesn't do that missile attack, you're able to shoot its wings. So yeah, uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, as long as you bring a bow character, you should be fine. But since it is a Hyper Bloom team, I have to run Yelon because she's the only water bow. So yeah. But as you see here, high HP, crit, crit, crit damage, ER. Yeah, you'll probably see what I mean um, by uh, these numbers. Uh, as for her weapons, Aqua Simulacra is her best weapon. Her best four star weapon is the Stringless. So, uh, Stringless or Aqua Simulacra, that is what you should be running on your Yelon. As for Artifact Set, I have 4 Piece Emblem. This is the best set for sub DPS Yelon. Definitely her best set in general because of how much damage her burst does. If you're running main DPS Yelon, then you could just run another set like Hydro or you could just run a normal attacking set. It doesn't really matter what you choose, but Emblem, definitely her best set uh, by far if you're running her as a sub. As for constellations, I have her at C0. Um, I will say this though, C6 makes her cracked as uh, F. Yeah, <laughs> because her normal attacks become her charge attacks. You know how broken that is? That That's busted. She was the strongest DPS in the game at the time, if you are counting C6. She's literally the strongest DPS in the game at the time. Until Nuvolet dethroned her because Nuvolet has better constellations. So yeah. Um, just keep that in mind. Uh, if you really want to run Yelon, if you're really happy um, with Yelon's gameplay and her character, you could honestly go for the C6 and just wail on everything. Yeah, it's really that broken. But I am speaking as a, uh, well, chief to play player, aka a uh, player who just spends occasionally. But... She doesn't need C she doesn't need constellations. She could just be C0 and she works. I mean, look, she's at C0 for me, and she's able to do big damage. So yeah, it doesn't really matter. But yeah. Um and as for talents, I have 6, 7, 10. Definitely one of her best um one of her best uh things about her kit is definitely her burst. So that is why I gave her the crown on her burst. It's that good. I am not joking. She is really good. No, <laughs> joke. You know, I know the reason why Ye Lan and Ching Cho are ran together. It's because of how much damage they do. Yeah. And besides, you could either interchange them anyway. So if your Ching Cho is on one of the first halves, then you could just run Ye Lan on the second half. Yeah. So basically, they're both broken. 
Um, Yelan does a little bit more damage than Xingqiu because her, her scaling on HP. But yeah, uh, Yelan still really good to this very day. One of the best Hydro supports, if not the best uh, Hydro supports, and also one of the best Hydro DPSs, if not the best Hydro DPS, because of how much damage she does and how much application she is able to output. So yeah. And last but not least, we have our boy, the Dendro healer. One of the best healers in the entire game, if not the best. We have Baiju. So yeah, um, definitely a GOAT. <laughs> because he has, well, he has everything it scales off of HP. And guess what talent gives him the best thing in the world? Yeah, he's broken. <laughs> so, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself here, but... High HP, ER, that's all you need. That's literally all you need on Baiju and he's able to be a god. <laughs> uh, prototype Amber is his best uh, free-to-play weapon. That is what I ran. Of course, his best weapon is his literal own weapon because it boosts the damage of uh, your party members. But Prototype Amber is his best four-star weapon. Yeah, you heard me right. A four-star weapon is one of his best weapons because, well, you're able to R5 it. You're able to get your burst back on energy. You're able to re regenerate HP. You're able to get HP percent. And guess what Baiju needs? HP percent. So, yeah. As for artifact set, I have Deep Wood Memory. It really doesn't matter what artifact set you run. He doesn't really have a good artifact set to begin with. You can run the newest healing bonus artifact set. You can run Deep Wood. You can run Gilded. It doesn't really matter what you run because, well, he doesn't have a good set, <laughs> in my opinion. So, yeah, I just ran Deep Wood because why not? I mean, there are times where I just don't run Nahida, so I just gave him Deep Wood. So, yeah. Um, that is what I run on Baiju. Um, I know Deep Wood doesn't stack with Nahida, I know, but um, the set anyway is just uh, too good to pass up um, on my subs because, well, it gives 40k HP to 126 ER. So yeah, uh, too good to pass up. As for Constellations, C0. He doesn't need Constellations to be good. He's literally good right off the bat. And as for Talon 666, minimally built, still really good. So yeah, but... You want to run him with high ER because of his burst. His burst is able to heal, give you shield, and because of your high HP, you're able to get this. So yeah. Really, really good. Baiju, busted. It's busted. And that is basically it for the um, character um, showcases. So yeah. That is it for um, the Spiral Abyss video. So, if you do like this video, be sure to give it a like down below. And if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell if you do subscribe to not miss out on a single upload. Again, any amount of support is greatly appreciated on this channel. It really means a lot to me that you guys um, like the videos, it just makes me want to put more Genshin content out there. And besides, I love the combat in Genshin. So um, playing Genshin is just really, really fun. Making videos is really fun too. So if you guys support my passion, um, again, thank you guys so much for liking and subscribing to the channel. And also comment down below, what do you think of my teams? And what do you think of the Spiral Do You think it's easy, you think it's hard? Uh, you think Gaming is broken? You think he's not? You think Shang Yun is broken too? You think she's not? What do you think of the plunging attack meta? You think it's meta? You think it's not? Let me know in the comments down below. And as always, thank you guys for watching this Genshin Spiral this video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.